Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. Chances are, if you're the type who's sitting around watching YouTube videos on money, you know what the Roth IRA is. But just in case, the Roth IRA was invented in 1998. So it's still relatively new to the investing world. But even though it's so new, it's become wildly popular. The Roth IRA is a tax advantaged account aimed at middle class Americans and helping them put away money for retirement. And as a tax advantaged account, it has some pretty big perks. How it works is that you contribute post-tax dollars or money you've already paid taxes on into your Roth account. That money is then allowed to grow completely tax-free. And once you reach retirement age, you can take out that money completely tax-free. So any of your contributions and any interest they have made, you get to take that out completely tax-free once you reach retirement age. Also, the Roth IRA does not have required minimum distributions. That's not like other retirement accounts like the traditional IRA or the 401k. The tax benefits get even better as you're allowed to pass your Roth onto your spouse without any sort of tax consequence. And they are not forced to take any sort of required minimum distribution. They can simply leave that money invested and allow it to grow for as long as they wish. Prior to the year 2019, this benefit was actually extended to non-spousal heirs, meaning that if you were a parent and you wanted to pass your Roth onto your child, when your child inherited it, they still were not forced to take any sort of required minimum distributions. They could leave that money growing tax-free as long as they wanted. However, the SECURE Act of 2019 did bring on some changes to Roths that are inherited by non-spouses after the date of December 31st, 2019. The biggest being if a non-spouse inherits a Roth IRA, they must withdraw the money from the account within 10 years time. Now, of course, there are exceptions to the rule, but with that being said, by and large, it is the new rule. So if you inherit a Roth IRA for someone other than your spouse, you can still allow that money to grow completely tax-free for an additional 10 years. After those 10 years, you do have to take the money out of the account. Now, of course, these changes were made because the government does eventually want to be paid some form of tax. They don't simply want you growing your money indefinitely, completely tax-free. And yes, we all know the Roth IRA does have limitations imposed on it. For instance, annual contribution limits as of 2021 are $6,000 per year for individuals under the age of 50, $7,000 for those age 50 and older. And of course, there are income limits as well. So if you're single making $125,000 or under or married and filing jointly with a combined income of $198,000 or less, you can contribute the full max to your Roth IRA. And there is a phase out period where you can make partial contributions as well. When your income exceeds these limits, you're not able to contribute to a Roth. Roths are amazing investment vehicles because you can practically put anything in them. Remember, they are just an account. Most people will put stocks, index funds, mutual funds, things like that in their Roth account. But some people have gotten really creative and put businesses or even real estate holdings in their Roth accounts. Here's the thing to remember with tax advantaged accounts. Even if they have income limits or contribution limits, a creative CPA or CFP can help you take advantage of these accounts, even if you are supremely wealthy. And that is exactly what's happened. The Roth, an investment vehicle originally designed to help middle-class Americans put away money for a more secure retirement is also being utilized by some of our nation's wealthiest constituents. Warren Buffett, for example, has a Roth IRA that has over 20 million tax-free dollars in it. Ted Welshler, Buffett's top lieutenant at Berkshire Hathaway, has $264 million in his Roth, but that's nothing compared to Peter Thiel, one of the original co-founders of PayPal, who has a Roth that has over $5 billion tax-free dollars in it. Now you might be thinking, how are the ultra wealthy taking advantage of the Roth when it has strict income limits? Well, in Teal's case, he actually socked away 1.7 million shares of PayPal into his Roth account in 1999. This was the year that PayPal was founded. Contribution limits to the Roth were low and so were Teal's wages. 
And being that PayPal was just founded, these shares weren't worth all that much. At the time, those 1.7 million shares were valued at a fraction of a cent per share, meaning his total 1.7 million shares were valued at $1,700, well within the annual contribution limit at the time for a Roth, which was $2,000. Needless to say, today PayPal is worth significantly more, and Teal has also made other wildly successful investments within his Roth. What about other mega millionaires and billionaires? How are they finding a way to take advantage of the Roth IRA when their income obviously exceeds the income limitations? Well, it's pretty simple. So simple and commonplace that it actually has a name. It is called the Backdoor Roth, a pretty stealthy name for a pretty common, easy conversion. And I'm gonna explain it here in the most simplistic of terms possible. Step number one, contribute to a traditional IRA because traditional IRAs do not have any income limitations. Step number two, fill out the paper necessary to convert the investments in your traditional IRA over to a Roth IRA. Step number three, pay some taxes. Funds that go into a traditional IRA are made with pre-tax dollars. So the government gives you a tax break when you contribute to those funds. Funds contributed to a Roth IRA are made with post-tax dollars. So when you convert your money from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, you are going to have to give that tax break back to the government. You have to pay taxes on this money. But after that, pretty darn simple, you have a Roth. It's important to note that you do end up paying taxes in this process. The government is not going to let you do this conversion completely tax-free. But once that money is in the Roth account, it is allowed to grow completely tax-free and you can take it out completely tax-free. Now remember, IRAs are simply account types. What you put in them, well, that's up to you. If you have a carefully curated selection of investments that hit stratospheric heights, well, then you are set up to be very, very wealthy without the tax burden. And that's pretty awesome. But the government does not share that sentiment. They do not like the idea that these mega millionaires and billionaires are taking advantage of these tax advantaged accounts. Instead, they are proposing changes to put a stop to mega Roths, super high value Roths, and backdoor Roths. There are presently three major changes proposed and if passed by Congress and our government will certainly change the landscape for the Roth IRA. Proposed change number one, the backdoor Roth. The backdoor Roth would no longer be an option. The backdoor Roth is what has allowed wealthy individuals and high income earners to take advantage of Roth accounts. They simply contribute their money to a traditional IRA because traditional IRAs don't have any sort of income limitations on who can contribute to them, fill out some paperwork, and then roll it on over into a Roth IRA. The government wants to take this option off the table. They effectively want to shut the door on the backdoor Roth. This reform would also put a stop to the mega backdoor Roth strategy. The mega backdoor Roth simply refers to a traditional 401k being converted on over to a Roth 401k. The reason they use the term mega is that the contribution limits for the 401k are significantly higher than they are for the IRA, but the strategy and the process used to make this conversion is the same. But nonetheless, this option would not be available any longer. Change number two, new contribution limits. The proposed change is that once your Roth IRA or your traditional IRA hits a value of $10 million, you would no longer be able to make any extra contributions to that account. Now it's important to note that this change is only proposed for high income earners. We're talking single individuals making $400,000 a year or more, or those married and filing jointly making $450,000 a year or more. Obviously the goal here is that the government doesn't want these supremely high value accounts to get even higher. And the final proposed change, mandatory withdrawals. The new mandatory withdrawals would go into a place for IRAs or 401ks that had a value in excess of $10 million. So once your account surpassed that value, you would be forced the following year to take out 50% 
of that excess amount above and beyond $10 million. So if your account grew to $12 million, the following year, you would have to take out at least $1 million because $1 million is 50% of the excess. The excess in this case is $2 million. That is what is excess to the $10 million mark. Now, of course, the tax treatment for these accounts is still going to remain the same. So if that money is taken out of a Roth account, it is withdrawn completely tax-free. If it is taken out from a traditional account, then you have to pay the mandatory taxes as you always did. Again, this reform is proposed on high income individuals. That is individuals earning over that $400,000 mark or married filing jointly earning over $450,000. Now it's obvious to see that these changes are being targeted at the high income earners and the very wealthy because we're looking at individuals making an income of over $400,000 a year with account balances over $10 million. I would gander to say that that is not your typical American. However, the elimination of the backdoor Roth will impact many more Americans. I personally love the benefits that come with a Roth IRA. I love the idea of having tax-free funds when I get to retirement because for someone like me who's not looking to retire for say 30 years or so, we all know that taxes are subject to change. Who knows what our nation's tax environment will look like in 30 years time. That's why I find it so appealing to have a tax-free account that I'll be able to take money out of. I don't know what taxes will look like, so I can prepare myself by having tax-free funds. Also, Roth IRAs have the ability to allow money to grow longer because traditional IRAs have those required minimum distributions. Roth IRAs don't have required minimum distributions. And I really love the idea of being able to pass on tax-free accounts to our beneficiaries and our heirs, because if we can help those we love when we leave, why not do it? For those reasons, I am really sad to see this proposed change to the Roth but perhaps it is helping to limit the fund's use to its original target audience, the middle class. As of this filming, these proposed changes are just that. They are proposed changes. They are not law, but if they do get passed by Congress and our government, they will take effect on January 1st, 2022. It's important to note that changes could be made to these proposals prior to them being passed. And also remember down the road, what's to stop another administration from putting forth new proposed changes? Remember, our government is ever evolving. So what do you guys think of these proposed changes to the Roth and tax advantage accounts? I would love to hear your opinion. I read every single comment and I reply to as many as I possibly can. That's gonna do it for me today, guys. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please consider hitting the like button. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you know of anyone who might get something out of this style of content, please consider sharing as it really does help the channel. I hope you guys have a good one and I will see you next week. Bye.